Hi guys, this is Ratchet Saw, and we are playing Criminal Case Elite Book, Case 31, Those Day. Let's unlock Chapter 3 and... Well, the alarm has turned on for what reason? Ladies, Spirit Katrina, I told you not to walk around the door without me. Get to Lab 15J, it's safe there. Go now. Gee. Katrina, what do you think is going on? Agent Bell, we better get back here soon and give us an explanation. Well, the alarm stopped. Since it has stopped suddenly. What the heck was that? I can explain the alarm. It was a safety drill. Really? I told you not to wander around without me. There are many hazardous materials on the door, so a real emergency could occur at any time. And you didn't just conveniently stage that drill, hoping you could scare us off. We'll do just fine without your company, Agent Bellamy. Fine, you can lawfully refuse my protection, but for your own sakes, you'd better hurry up with this investigation and clear out. Katria Dreva is definitely stepping up efforts to get rid of us, but you should know you never quit until the killer is caught. That's right. Good point, we're already here in Lab 15J. We shouldn't waste any more time. Let's look for clues. Alright. Oh, look at you sneaking. Like you found out about something. Alright, let's investigate the, the lab again. What's a gift box for the victim doing in this lab? And why is it locked? Looks like you have to apply your special skills to open it. And there's some torn paper. If your gut says to piece it back together, go for it. Katria's Disputory is one of, one of the many mysteries inside the dome, and True Life won't keep us from solving it. Yeah, let's solve it. These guys are... These guys are getting on our nerves. Gee. Okay, let's restore this paper. Alright, a pie chart, but of what? Fred Drucker and the rest of it is faded. Hey, that door paper is some kind of pie chart, and the victim's name is on it. I'll get you that's the key for the rest of the information. You alright? Okay, let's unlock the gift. Okay. Katria, you got the victim's skip box open, and there's a pacifier inside. Is this some kind of a joke? There's no mention of Draco having kids in his file. Perhaps Samir can examine this pacifier to help us find out something about the gift giver. Yeah. Alright, let's dust the paper. See what this pie chart is about. Reasons why I will never get this stupid project done on time. Fred Draco says 10% still crazies 18% via 5% exhaustion. Well well. 
Okay, the pie chart title is reasons why I will never get this stupid project done on time. Fred Drucker was 37% of the problem, apparently. And since he found this pie chart in Dr. Vegas's lab, my guess is he found the victim to be more than a minor annoyance. We gotta ask Dr. Vega why Fred Drucker was such a problem for him. Yeah. Dr. Vega, we found your pie chart. Why was Fred Drucker said 10% of why you wouldn't finish a stupid project? Oh man, I thought I had gotten rid of that dumb chart. My answer is simple. Drucker was overseeing my work as I said, but instead of making sure that things ran smoothly, he caused problem after problem. He even tried to reallocate my research assistants to other projects. Yet he still wanted results on a deadline. No matter how many times I tried to explain to that twerp that scientific research doesn't work like that. But you know, I wasn't the only scientist around here who had a problem with the guy. You should talk to Mortimer Pickering. Oh. Really? Well, if you say we should speak with Dr. Pickering, then we will. I don't think we haven't got our eyes on you anymore. Well, well. <laughs> Pickering? Do you have something to say? Dr. Pickering, we have heard a rumor that you are not exactly friendly with Fred Drucker. Robert, what's going on? Is it true you had trouble with the guy? Oh, he was not the officers. It's only that I didn't appreciate that man's attempts at Im imit imitating my accent. He constantly teased me about being from across the pond. He also said that I was older and more boring than the rocks I studied, and he cheated at billiards. But I would never hurt anyone, Katarina. Surely you know this. Of course we do, but we were still worried to hear you had trouble with someone. Stay safe. Oh, only billiards, so you're out. What's the meaning of this pacifier? Because it's a very weird gift. Hello, Katrina. I'll admit this is one of the weirder gifts I've ever analyzed. My guess is it was a joke gift. The thought had crossed our minds, but who would give a pacifio to the victim? I'm not sure what was going on between those two, but there was only one set of prints on the gift. The prints of the pacifio belonged to a dome security officer named Barb Bellamy. Oh! Bellamy popping up again? She seemed more interested in giving the victim warnings than gifts. Katia, let's get back and grill Barb Bellamy to get the real story. Yeah. This is weird. What's the meaning of this pacifier? Hey, Bellamy, we to know why on earth would you give a pacifier to Fred Drucker? What's going on? I gave Drucker a pacifier because he was such a big baby. After I gave him his final warning about watering into restricted areas, I caught him having an unauthorized video chat with his mother. Personal communication with anyone outside the dome is strictly monitored, but our little mama's boy refused to respect the rules that apply to everyone in the dome. He disrespected the rules, he disrespected me, and he kept getting away with it. I could put up with him beating me at billiards, but not his total lack of respect for my authority. I wanted to humiliate him into behaving himself. Or maybe you wanted to make a preemptive strike against the troublemaker. You're climbing up our suspect list. You are. You're very suspicious. Katrina, Miss Pierre's dead prior she sure knew how to ruffle feathers. Even Robert had problems with the guy, though I know he never hurt anyone. Seems like Bellamy was getting fed up with Drucker's disrespect, while Dr. Vega felt his research was being compromised. And, to top it all off, we still haven't found a murder weapon. But you have an excellent point, Katrina. This rec room would be a perfect place for the kill to have hidden it. We know they passed through here. 
Let's have a hard look around the red crew, Katarina. We're about to wrap up this case. Yeah. All right. Let's let's investigate the red crew again. Let's find that DIY murder weapon. place to hide something there we go oh that looks like a tie yeah with this tie piece and we know it was ripped off during the murder Katrina, you found a missing half of the victim's tie. What a score. The tie piece does have a weird stain on it. That stain must be left by the killer when they tore it. We need to get a sample. And your rider could be something hidden in that box of video game accessories. Dig in. I feel like we are right around the corner from an arrest, Katarina. Let's do this. Alright. Alright, so let's, let's look through here. Oof, so many good stuff here. Steering wheels, controllers. Which game is this? Eden's Riddle, sounds like Resident Evil to me. <laughs> game Boys. Wow. And we found a murder weapon. Why did you find it in that box? It looks like some kind of homemade electronic device. Well, you're right. Martin said the victim was electrocuted, electrocuted with a DIY stun gun. Do you think this could be it? I'm sure Rita could take a look at this device to check your theory. Let's send it to her. Okay. All right, now let's collect the stain from the tie. Right in the middle. <laughs> yeah, I'll sample of the substance that the cure left behind on the victim's tie. Let's get to Amir Katarina. Alright. Who's this strange device? The murder weapon? Katarina, great slotting. This DIY stun gun is definitely the murder weapon. There's no mistake. I compared it with the body of the victim's neck and got a batch. It's not the fanciest piece of machinery, but it'll electrocute a person, no problem. Did the killer leave any, any evidence behind on the weapon? Actually, they did. Either while they were making the weapon, or while they were using it, some fibers got caught in the plastic parts. Amir analyzed ever said that the fibers were prima cotton. Very fancy stuff used for button-down shirts, usually. And the cotton was dyed a particular shade of blue, so whoever the killer is, they are wearing a blue shirt. So the killer is wearing a blue shirt. That will narrow down the suspect list considerably. Alright. Now this creamy sauce is from the tie. Man, I'm going to be happy to have Rapper back in the lab when this dough stuff is over with. I have a lot on my plate. I can imagine. On that note, what did you find on the sausage the cure left on the victim's tie? The sausage you said it was rash cream. Just to be sure, I asked for Marty's autopsy report that the victim did not have a rash. 
Therefore, the Kiro must have left that rash cream on the victim's thigh when they grabbed him to stun him. So the Kiro has a rash. Well, I hope they are ready to go to prison because that's an itch we can scratch. Alright. Well, Katrina, we have all the evidence we need to arrest Fred Trucker's killer and learn more about the conflicts brewing on this dome. Let's go. Okay. So, it was the architect, huh? Why'd you kill him? Why'd he have to die? Dan Skrofinski, you're under arrest for the murder of Fred Trucker. Who? Me? You're joking. I know I had some issues with the guy, but come on. Yes, you did have issues with the victim. And you made sure no one would see how bad those issues were. You left multivitamin powder or a security camera you destroyed. That platform is an open space and anyone on the dome might have destroyed that camera. But would that person also happen to have a rash? You left cream for yours on the victim's tie when you grabbed him. There have been reports of skin reactions and something in the air recycling system. We're working on it. Good to know, but I'd be even more interested in knowing how fibers from your blue shirt ended up on a stun gun used to electrocute Trucker. Confess. I knew I should have paid more attention when I got rid of that thing. Yes, I killed Fred Trucker, and boy did that jerk have it coming. Why? Were you fed up with his arrogance? Because that's no reason to kill a person. Drucker being a jerk I could handle, but he was going to tell Rosetta that I wasn't taking good enough care of my baby. My dome. It was nothing but lies, but it would be his word against mine, and I know she would have believed him and fired me. And why would Drucker have tried to get you fired, Mrs. Grafinski? He wanted to be out of the way so that Rosetta would put him in charge of the whole dome. My dome. Once he convinced her, I would be terminated, banished from my dome forever. And in the end, that's going to happen anyway. You're under arrest. So that's what it's all about. Mrs. Grafinski, you're before this court charged with the murder by electrocution of Fred Trucker. You have made the weapon yourself. The weapon was easy peasy compared to the entire mini world I created for Dream Life. So you are con con contesting the charges against you? You don't understand. I couldn't just let Trucker banish me. Very well, this court probably sends you to 25 years in prison. But who would take care of the dome? Who would take care of my creation? There are people capable of doing it, you're just an architect. <clears throat> so the lead architect of the dome is locked up for murdering another structure now. Yeah, I'm sure the dome is safer for that. Sounds like it's a doggy dog world in there. <coughs> <coughs> the thing that got the dish for Rosetta's favor ended up in one top figure killing another. Anyway, now we can return to the bigger mission. Wait to learn more about the VTR dream life is hiding under the dome. According to the warrant, we can go back there to run a final check of the crime scene. We need to use the time we still have on the dome to learn everything we can. I'll call Gloria. I think we'll need a few more hands on deck. Okay, 